Next week, I'm going to go over the second half. Uh, that'll be my thoughts on it, okay? Uh, when I go on my thoughts about it, I have some uh, things I pulled out and looked at for years on this. Um, the timeliness uh, and everything down the line, this is, uh, this is great. It's a great study, and we'll see what the Lord is looking at in the book of Revelation. Now, remember, we were in the first chapter. He is on the Isle Patmos. Amen? Amen. We have to remember these things. We cannot sensationalize things. He's sitting on the Isle of Patmos. God comes to him, the Lord, he talks to him, okay? And, uh, and he tells him, look, I want you to uh, write these things. What's that? I want you to see what you wrote. I want to see go into the past. What's that? I want you to write about the Gospel of John and the, what thou hast seen, what thou sees. What's that? That's the letters, the epistles he's writing, 1 John, 2 John, Third John, and then he says, and what shall come? What's that? He's right, got right the book of Revelation. That's what's going to uh, come at that time. So here comes John. He is, uh, he's, he's exiled uh, by Domitian, and then uh, here he is getting this look, and now he's going to get a different look. First he's on the Isle of Patmos. Well, now God says, I'm going to give you a different look at this. I'm going to take you to a different area, and I'm going to show you, but this this travel to a different area is going to be part of an example of things. So, he gives them the church age in chapter 2. He starts out four churches. There are seven churches all together. Uh, God doesn't separate things uh, uh, the same as you do. When he does sevens, it's what's the imbalance? It's four and three. Even in the feast, it's always four and and three. That's how God uh, sets things up. If you were to look at not just the feasts, uh, you were to look at the timeline of weeks. This is the Old Testament. How many years? 4,000. A day is but a thousand years, amen? Okay, so we got four days, right? Okay, Jesus, this is this part. In uh, Hebrews chapter 9, it says, There is no testament without the death of the what? Testament. Testator. Who's a testator? Okay. Jesus Christ. Okay, there's where it becomes the New Testament. The New Testament starts what? After his death. Okay? Not his birth, after his death. So you got 4,000 years of the Old Testament comes up to here. Now what were they doing in the Old Testament? Well, they were looking for the, they were to look for the Messiah. When's the Messiah coming? Remember the woman at the well? What did she say? When Messiah comes, he's going to make everything right. Didn't she say that? Okay, that's what they were looking for. Why do you think Jesus went to see her? What did, the, what did his uh, disciples say, Peter, when he comes up? He goes, go, Andrew runs over to Peter and he says, hey, God, come on with me. What, are we going to meet this guy? Who's this guy? I, I think he's the, he's the Christ, Andrew said. Peter gets down there. He says something to Peter. What does Peter say? You're the son of God. Nathaniel, you're the son of God. Why? They were, reading, they were the people reading the book. See, that's what it was all supposed to be. Everything was a picture, uh, as easy as it can to, to get to the Messiah. They all should have been in the field when he was born going, yeah, he's here. Yay! But how were they? They didn't want nobody's around. He had to be born in the middle of a field, probably, in a horse feeder or cow feeder or sheep feeder. Uh, here, put some hay in real fast. We'll have the baby. You see, he was born into the world that didn't want him. I know, you went down and you saw the uh, great-looking display over there, and that, hey, hey, that's right. It's not a religious event. It's seriousness and reality. Nobody wanted Christ. We, we got this thing handled ourselves, we thought. So he shows up, we're looking for him. So what is it right here? Now he's on earth, his, his actual ministry is in the Old Testament. He didn't die yet. His ministry is in the Old Testament. What does he tell them then? How are they getting saved then? Well, didn't he say this to them? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth what? In him. He's walking around. He's walking around. Believe in him. He didn't die yet. There's the Christ. What did John the Baptist say? Behold, the, the, the Lamb of God that taketh away 
the sin of the world. He was yelling it the second time. You have an exclamation part. He said, look, you better get this, to, get this in your heart. That guy's the Christ. I thought I didn't know who he was, and then all of a sudden, uh, I saw the Holy Ghost go inside this guy, lighting upon him. He's the he's the Son of God. This has all changed everything. He's not just a righteous man. He's not just uh, just a guy who was sent to be the Messiah. He's actually God manifest in the flesh. And I saw him. So he he preaches that, and then all of a sudden, Christ gets he dies on the cross, and then we got how many years now? Two thousand. Two thousand years. Two days, right? Thousand years of a day. And then something's going to happen right here. Something's going to happen right there. And then there's how many years for a tribulation? Seven. Seven. Okay? And then we got a thousand years. Now, I don't know how God divides that up. This could be part of the thousand years here, but we do know it's a thousand year where Christ shall reign. Amen? Right. And then we have the great white throne, and then eternity after that. Okay? So we all know the setup. Miss Adrian, you know the setup? Okay. So there is your seven. All right. So now the church ages. Inside this, there were seven churches. And what he was trying to say is there, there are seven churches. They're always there. It's like a rainbow. They're the, they're the colors. One church is like Ephesus. One church is like Smyrna. It could be a church out there like the Laodiceans. It could be a church like the per Pergamos. And he said these are practical. This is their practical use. Every church will fit in one of those churches. And, and then he says, well, I got a prophetic look too. The first part of the first part of the 2,000 years was Ephesus. Uh, they started out, they were no different than if somebody here ever started a business. What's that? You work, you work, you work, you work, you work, you work. You don't get any sleep. You're married to it. What happens? You forget about the, the uh, adrenaline behind it. And now it's just routine, isn't it? That's what happened in the first church. They lost their uh, love for devotion time with the Lord. And next thing you know, what are they doing? Work, 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 get this going. The second church, they, 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 uh, they had laws against them. Uh, they, they, uh, they had emperors against them. Uh, they, were being, uh, they were being tortured. And they were hiding in caves and everything else. And they had 10 days, it said, of, uh, of perilous times. They had 10 days. Of tribulation, they were the ten emperors that came up. Ten days. Uh, it doesn't mean twenty-four hours. The days of old, the days of uh, uh, Hadrian, the days of, of that this Caesar. That's how God puts that in there. Okay, those days, not ten days like some systematic dry cleaner. Ten days. Uh, next church was um, the next church of the four after uh, Smyrna was Pergamos, and that they're the churches in a practical use. They're the churches, and everybody starts inside talking about the government. You see them. We're going to save the country. You ain't saving any country. God's not building a country. He's building a church. I will build my church, not country. Countries come and go. Kingdoms come and go. The church stayed on for 2,000 years, and there's nothing different about this. This is no different than Rome, okay? And you see what's happening outside. It ain't exactly great. Then the next church was a church by the name of Thyatira. Uh, they were a defiled church. They started, the women started running the church. Uh, next thing you know, in our ages, what happened? Women started getting up to the pulpit, didn't they? And how'd that work out? Doesn't work out well, does it? Why? They're not supposed to. It's God's divine order of things. Okay? He wants Adam in it. But what's what happens is. You know, uh, when we're complacent today, the church, just so you know, men are complacent. So why don't you look around them? What do you have? Mostly what? Women. Mostly women today that are in the church. Uh, then the next group of churches came in. And, uh, and the, uh, with the one Philadelphia, of course, the second one to the end. And uh, so it was Sardis. They're a dead church. Then came Philadelphia, which was a church of... Of friends, brotherly, brotherly love, love your brethren. What do you do? You go out and you tell them about the Lord. Okay, and that's what they did. And of course, uh, in 1611, uh, there came the Bible. Okay, God only needs to translate the Bible one time. 
We don't need all these others, these committees and groups to get together and mess it up and start bringing new words, taking out words, taking out verses, just destroying the concepts of it. God can do it once. That's all we need it. He did it. Why can't you just accept it? It's just like this. Uh, if there were a hundred ways to get saved, Roxanne would be standing in line saying, what about this way? <laughs> Instead of being thankful that God gave you one way, and it's easy. How many gods are there? One. How many saviors? One. 450 different Bibles? It doesn't make the mark. There's only one. There's one God of the Bible. There can only be one Bible of God. Amen. If anybody wants to sit down with me, I'll actually show you some things in there. There's no way a man could have written it. I'm talking about verses that actually spell his name right in the verses. If you count, it's just incredible. It goes so deep, you'll go insane trying to deal with it. It's, that's why he says, heaven and earth's going to pass away, but not in my words. Amen. So, now we're coming in and we're done. Uh, he's done explaining the churches. Uh, and let's go into chapter 4. And the Bible says, after this. I looked, and behold, a door was open in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet, talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit. Look, stop right there. Uh, Father, uh, uh, thank you, Lord. We love you. We just ask you, Lord, if you would, to bless this time. Bless our hearts here, Lord God. Let us know thy truth, Lord Father. We're excited about this coming up, Lord, and we thank you for it. Let us have a good holiday. And also, Lord, uh, those that couldn't come today, and uh, I know Mary's not feeling well, Lord. Uh, we pray, Lord, you give her a good blessing, Lord Father. Also for Andy and Denise, Lord Father, and any others that we have, anybody that's sick, Lord Father, or anything coming up, we thank you for it, Lord, and we ask you, Lord, to get this to our hearts. We need it to our souls in Jesus' name. Amen. So um, he says, after this. After what? He just, it's a timely see where God puts things in. After this. After what? After chapter 3. What happened in chapter 3? We had the churches. Look at the last word in that chapter. You need a Bible? I got one. I mean, I got a personal one. You keep it. Amen. Does anybody else? Anybody else need one? Everybody on the same page. Amen. So he says, after this, after what? Look at the last word, 22. After this, what? The churches. After the churches. And you'll notice that after that point, there's never going to be the word church in Revelation. It's not there anymore. All the way through the tribulation, it won't be there. After this, it's timely. It's time essence. Go to uh, uh, Acts chapter 15. I'll show you some things. After this, Acts chapter 15. Acts chapter 15. Let's start in verse number 14. This is, um, this is a, a portion where um, James stands up and he, he talks about what Peter did. He says, uh, actually we'll start in 13. The Bible says, and after they had held their peace, James, the Lord's brother, he's the pastor down there in uh, uh, Jerusalem at the time. James answered saying, men and brethren, Hearken unto me. Give me your ear. Simeon, that's Peter. Simeon is Peter here. We, this is act, he's, he's telling the story of Acts chapter 10. Simeon hath declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. Isn't that now what he just said? He said he's going to the Gentiles, right? And he's going to look for people, look for another fold. Okay, he's going to start looking for other people now. Uh, look at verse number, uh, verse number 15. And 
To this agree the words of the prophet as it is written. Verse 16. What are the two words? After this, I will return. I'm going to go to the Gentiles. But after this, I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down, and I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will uh, set it up. Okay, so does anybody here see the Lord's temple over there in Israel right now? So it hasn't come yet. This is a future event. So what's he got to get done with first, the Gentiles? I'm dealing with the Gentiles for two days, and then I'm going to come back, he says. After uh, this, after these things have happened, uh, uh, go, to, um, go, to, uh, go to John chapter 14. You'll have to do a lot of Bible today. John 14. This event is very important to you. Why? You're going to be in it. You can't stop this one. Every one of you. This is your next event right here. And it's coming real soon. John chapter uh, 14. Looking at the first verse, he says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I, I would have told you. I go prepare a place for you. Where? In the mansion. You're not getting your own mansion. Who came up with that one? You're getting it. You're getting. Why would you want to be alone? God wants you to be in fellowship with Him. Amen. He says, I go prepare a place for you. Here it is. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will do what? I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go, you know, and the way you know. He, he, said, he turns around and says, don't you realize if I go away, I'm coming back again. I'm going to come back again, and he says, I'm going to receive you. He's not telling everybody else he's going to receive me. He says, I'm going to receive my people, my kids. That's who he's looking for, my kids. Go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. A lot of Bible today for one little subject. And we still have next week. Next week a lot different though. First Thessalonians chapter 4. First Thessalonians chapter 4. First number we're going to start in 13. He says, but, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren. I don't want you to be dumb. I don't want you to be stupid. I want you to know these things. That's what God's saying. Ignorant means not no, no knowledge of. I don't want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them that which are what? Asleep. Asleep. What? Remember Lazarus? He sleepeth. He was dead in the tomb, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. Okay, God's people sleep. We're going to go over that in Revelation chapter 6. I can't spend much time on it today. God's people sleep when they don't die, they sleep. He said to you, he said, if you believe in me, you shall never die. die. You shall never die. Your soul is old. Body just dropped, but you're going to be standing right there. You're going up with to be with the Lord. Absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. Can't drag that flesh up there. So he, John chapter, uh, I mean, if, First Thessalonians chapter 4. I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Now, he's not saying you don't mourn for people when they pass away. He says don't, you don't need to continue on this and worry about this. Okay? I, I've got a plan for all this. And he says, For if we believe, that Jesus died and rose again. Do you believe the, the crucifixion and, and his resurrection? Even so, them also 
which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. So when he comes back, he's bringing your relatives with him. Those ones that went on before us that are saved, he's bringing them back with him, their souls back with him. That's what it says. Okay? Four. This we say unto you by the word of the Lord. Here's, there, there's the authority, God's book. That we which are alive. Who's that? That's us, right? We which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Now that part right there needs some explaining. We will not prevent them which are asleep. Okay? Uh, if you remember a woman by the name of Martha. Remember her? Mm -hmm. Mary and Martha. Martha, uh, Lazarus is dead. Okay? And she comes, she comes out and meets him at the end of the town. And she turns around and she says, Lord, if you would have been here, uh, my brother wouldn't have died. Okay? Now, Martha, is uh, he starts explaining things to Martha in time. And he says, he turns to her and he says, um, let's go there. Chapter 11. John chapter 11. Just better. John chapter 11. Look at verse, we're going to start in verse number uh, 23. Jesus is talking to Martha. Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection when? At the last day. Okay, so she says, well, he's going to come back. Uh, we know that on the last day he's going to come back. So what they were thinking was that everything's going to play its game out, all humanity, and it's going to end. Everybody's going to die, and then on the last day he's going to raise everybody up, his people, in the land. That's what they believed. Why wouldn't they believe that? That's what the that's what how the they they read the scriptures. On the last day, everybody gets up. The resurrection of the dead. They all going to get up. Okay. Uh, he's trying to explain them to them in 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 uh, chapter uh, four of Thessalonians that no, that's not true. And he says to Martha, he says he says, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet Yet shall he live again. So he covers the people who died before, didn't he? He says, they're going to live again. Now watch the next part. He says, he says, uh, verse 26, And whosoever liveth is still living. Who's that? That's you. And believest in me shall what? Never die. Believest thou this. Do you believe that, Martha? And then, of course, what does Martha say? Yeah, I believe you're the Christ. I didn't ask that. Did you just realize what you just read? You've been reading it for years, not realizing she didn't understand the thing he said. She just turned around and said, I, I believe you're the Christ. She didn't believe what he was saying. She didn't understand it. Why? 30 and 40 years, maybe. We don't know how long she's been taught the other way. It's hard when somebody comes up and brings something to you and says, wait a second, I know that, uh, you know that doctrine you have back there? Just so you know, our doctrine, we've had it. Uh, it changed. Like we read things that said that's wrong. You see, that's what happens. What's that? Does the Bible correct us? Yes, we don't correct it. Amen? We conform to it. It doesn't conform to us. Only in Joel Wolstein's um, world does it conform to you. Amen. So that's what he's trying to say. He gives them two instances. Look, if you're a, if you died, you're going to live again. If you you're going to be raised up again. But if you live in it at the time when I come back, guess what? You're never going to die. And that's what he's telling them. Go back to uh, let's go back to Revelation. Actually, go to First Thessal go to that uh, Thessalonians chapter four. We're going to go back to there. I only went to there because. And we were messed up with the problem. Verse 14. 
For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so uh, them which, are, uh, which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that uh, we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. You notice how it's 14 and 15, just like in John 11. Now watch verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall arise first. Then, so we see the one event. Then, we which are alive, which is everybody, and remain shall be caught up together uh, with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever uh, be with the Lord. Comfort one another with these words. And that's what you're supposed to comfort people with that are... Uh, about to pass away. Uh, that's how you comfort people. Uh, you don't sit there and just comfort them. Oh, I love you. I love you. Tell them good words, God's words. They're better. Amen? They're going to meet God. Tell them about them. Talk about them. Amen? So, um, what he's telling them all together is, look, something's going to happen. Now, you'll notice something. I answer a few questions actually uh, right in there, and we'll get to them. He said that he's going to have a shout, but you'll notice it said something. It said that he is going to himself come get us. He shall descend himself. The reason why I'm bringing that to you, there's a group out there that believe that the, that the rapture is after uh, the tribulation, after the seven years. Now, i got to tell you, it couldn't be. Do you realize that the Antichrist is going to use signs and wonders? What's that mean? You're going to have a whole bunch of Christians that would be ripping down there getting the mark because he's doing tongues and all these tongues are for a sign. He'd be speaking in tongues and he's going to bring down fire and heal people and all this stuff. He's going to have a sensational type of uh, service where everybody's going to be in there just cheering and stuff like that, just like the 450 prophets of Baal. That's how it works, people. Uh, it's enticing. What's i got to get in there. There's a lot of people there. Don't you say that to yourselves. You know, there's a whole lot of people down the road. I need to go there. i got to find out what's going on. You go in there, it's just dry, moldy bread. Don't worry about it. They don't use the right book. The guy's going to tell you what you want to hear, and everybody's going to be fleshly. It's simple as that. Stop looking at that. Remember, if we go by Jesus' standards, uh, how big should the church be? The day of small things, people. How many people have learned more Bible in here than they've learned in their whole life? It should be about every hand. Why is that? Well, you're learning the Bible. We've been going verse by verse, chapter by chapter, book by book, haven't we? That's how you learn the Bible, don't you? Not just going here, there, everywhere, and dancing around, yelling in stupid things. Amen. So, basically, the one part he says that's going to come up again, look at this part, it says... Verse 16, for the Lord himself shall descend. That's number one. It's the Lord himself. With a shout, with the voice. There's somebody speaking of the archangel. It's the Lord, the trump of God. That's who we have. Go to, uh, go to Matthew chapter 24. Like I said, we got a lot of, a lot of Bible today. You're learning today. I'm not going to get up here and just yell at you. I like doing it, but still. After we're done, I'll yell at Brian. Matthew chapter 24. Look down at verse 29. This is what they're looking at. This is, this is where they're getting this after the tribulation from. Look at verse 29. He says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. That's not the Son of Man, just a sign. And then shall all the tribes of earth mourn, and 
and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Is that what we're going to see? No, we're going to see he's just going to come and get us, he said. You're not seeing all these things. These are for people. They're going to start seeing them, and they're going to get scared. They're going to fear them. Why? Because they've done something wrong. That's why. They're going to start wondering what it is. Now watch. And it says, it says um, verse, number, verse number 31, And he shall do what? Send his... Wait a second. The Lord himself shall descend. Now all of a sudden they're angels. What's the problem here? It's not, a, it's not the rapture. You know what that is? That's going to be the end, of the end of the tribulation. He's going to be gathering people up from the four winds and doing what? Bringing them over there to judgment. Well, how do you know that? Chapter 25 of Matthew is all about judgment. It's all about the judgment of the nations. He's going to be bringing them in. Why is that? There's world leaders and stuff. I've got to bring them in. I've got to judge them now. You think he's going to go into the millennium with those bozos? Get over here, Biden. Get over here, Pelosi. Get over here. All you, even Trump, you get in here. If you ain't saved, get in. Why? You leaders messed it all up. And I've had enough and you're out of here. Depart from me, you cursed, in everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. You didn't want to listen? That's what you get. Right there. That's the Lord. That's the Lord. Esau, Jacob I have loved. Esau have I hated. Think about that, people. <clears throat> Lord don't hate anybody. Hated Esau. You think the Lord's walking around with, ra with these rapists and these child molesters sitting there cheering them on? You see what they've done to our our at the highest seat the, that we have, they're disgusting now. Oh, yeah, we want these guys. Oh, yeah, America, that's a great place. We've made it into a zoo. Lord's got to come back. Amen. All right. So, go back to Revelation chapter 4. We've covered this part. Verse number one again, after this, we know what after this means. I looked, and behold, a door, okay? Who's the door? Jesus. A door, it's spiritual, people. The God writes the book spiritually. He's not talking about a physical door, okay, Miss Adrian? I'm here. Don't worry about it. Amen? All right, look what he says. He says, there, he says, a door. That's Jesus Christ. He's the door to the sheep. He says, that door was open. And now the first what? Voice. He didn't say it was a trumpet. He said, the first voice which I heard was as like it were of a trumpet. Not a trumpet, but like as if it were a trumpet. Go back to Revelation chapter 1. Verse number ten, we already read this. And I was in the I, I was in the spirit of the Lord's uh, on the Lord's day, and heard behind me a great voice, as of a trumpet. In Isaiah chapter fifty-eight, it says, uh, "It says, cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and tell my people their transgression." Expressions. That's what a preacher, a preacher should do. Cry aloud. Spare it not. Tell the people about their transgressions. Amen. That's what he's talking about. His, that voice is his own voice. And he, and he says it was talking with me. It's, it's with me. It's personal. Okay? He says, I know my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know their names. It's personal. What do you think you're going to hear? Remember Lazarus? He gets out there with Lazarus and he turns around and he says, what does he say? Lazarus, come forth. Why do he say Lazarus, come forth? Because if he would have said, come forth, you realize what would have happened that day? Everybody would have been getting out of the ground. So he turns around, he has to be just right. He says, Lazarus, it's personal. He's talking with me. Lazarus. Come forth. Roxanne, come forth. Come up hither. 
Brian, come up hither. That's how it's going to be. You're going to hear your name and the Lord's going to mention your name. Come on up. Come on up here. And, and he says, come on up. I will show thee things which must be, what's the next word? Hereafter. What's that? That's a time, that's a time word. Okay? Hereafter. Go to uh, John, the Gospel of John chapter 1. It's going to be at the end of the chapter. If anything with me, you'll learn the books of the Bible and where they are. <laughs> Verse number, um, verse number 43. The day following, Jesus uh, would go forth into Galilee and findeth Philip, and saith unto him, Follow me. Now Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip findeth Nathanael, and saith unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? It, it wasn't a great town. He says, that, 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 Those bums up there. Uh, Philip saith unto him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him, and saith unto him, Behold, in Israel light indeed, in whom is no guile. Uh, he says, You aren't thinking wrong when you said that. That's what he's helping him out a little bit here. And he says, uh, he, he says, uh, Nathaniel, verse 48, Nathaniel saith unto him, Whence knowest thou? How do you know me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before the Philip called thee, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. That's a little incident. Now watch Nathaniel. Nathaniel answered and saith unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God. He was looking for him. Thou art the Son of God. Thou art the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I, I said unto thee, I, I saw thee under the fig tree. That easy? Believest thou? You believe it over that? Thou shalt see greater things than these. Verse 51. And he saith unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you. What's the next word? Hereafter. Something in the future, isn't it? Hereafter. Something in the future. He says, Ye shall see heaven open, and the angels of God descending and Ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. That's Jacob's ladder right there. That's what he just told him. What's that? That's what you're hereafter. You're going to see these things. Okay? Not now, but hereafter. After the church age, and then hereafter, you're going to see things. Okay? Now, let's go up to uh, verse number two. And immediately. Let's just look at that word. And immediately. What's uh, immediately? Directly. Directly. Instantaneously. Okay? What's what's he talking about? Uh, he says that, and immediately I was in the spirit. Now, when that's man's spirit. You notice how it's a small s? That's man's spirit. I was in the spirit. Well, I'll tell you this. When you're in the spirit, uh, when you, you, ever, you ever sing a song and, and you hear the words of it, and you're like, I can, I can put that to myself. Uh, I give in verses out, and uh, and you the verses catch you. What do you do? You some of you claim those verses to yourself, don't you? Mm -hmm. You know what that is. You were in the spirit in that day. Spirit, it's not seen. Spirit, it is something spiritual. This is a spiritual thing right here. Go ahead, dear. He says immediately, directly, uh, when when he. Healed the guy with the palsy. Uh, what happened? Did the guy did the guy get up? Oh, 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 like I do out of bed every morning, just like all you. <laughs> and that's funny. You guys are like, I, I work out every day. I say to my wife, and she says, I, I said to her one day, you know why I work out? So I get out of bed like this. I think. <laughs> I mean, man, we used to get out of bed real real easy as kids, roll over, whatever, just get out, yay. Boy, now you got to practice to get out. The alarm rings. You know why you, you, we push that snooze alarm? Because we know. We need five more minutes just to think about this, this event. 
Well, anyway, it's immediately. What? He gets right up. Uh, this happens that fast. With It's going to turn over right at that time. As soon as he says, uh, come up hither, you know what's going to happen? Bam. It's going to start. Now, he didn't tell you it was going to be boom. That's it. It's all over. But we'll see. But it says here, he says, immediately. Immediately these things are, are going to happen. And he says, and immediately I was in the scriptures. I mean, excuse me, the spirit died. You quit laughing. I made a mistake. Man, them two girls, you know, I got to get to the point where I put them in front of my truck and drive and see how fast they can run. Amen. And immediately was... I was in the spirit. Go to, uh, let's go over and see a little bit of this. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. What is he talking about? I was in the spirit. Now, look, he says, I was in the spirit. Now, the chapter 15 of uh, 1 Corinthians, it starts out with the definition of the gospel. Amen? <coughs> What's the gospel? Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Amen? Okay. Easy enough. And there's a reason he tells you. He tells you because what? You're saved. And then he's going to tell you about the things towards the end times here. And he's going to bring up some uh, great spiritual uh, things up in verse number 44, but before that, before that, he, he's going uh, to bring up uh, these, these certain things. So, uh, let's go down to um, verse number, th we're going to start in verse number 34. He says, Awake to righteousness and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. But some man will say, How are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? So he's going to explain this now. Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened, except it die. Uh, does anybody realize what he just said? Uh, anybody here ever go to a funeral? Okay, you got the viewing. You, you all see that person that's there? That's not, they're not in there. Okay, just a stiff, whatever. Okay, then what happens to it? You take it out of there and where does it go? It goes into the ground. You know, nowadays we spend like $20,000. You could have just thrown them in like the old days, you know. I mean, man, you've made a big thing where you got to make money now. Let's get a business going off of this. So anyway, he says, he says that that's what happens. It gets put in the ground. Watch. Except it die. And that, verse 37, and that which thou sowest, putting it in the ground, thou sowest not that body that shall be. It's not the same body. But bear, he says, but bear grain. It may chance of wheat or some other grain. Uh, he says uh, when you put those seeds in the ground, it, it comes up like something different. He says, but God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one, look at the next word, kind. Why did he use kind? Because when he gets to the first chapter of Genesis and he shows you the physical creation, he says, what, there's one kind, this kind of animal, that kind. You have a cat can't have a dog. There are different flesh is what he's saying. Uh, two, ca two cats get together, can't have a dog. Two dogs get together, can't have a bird. Amen? Birds have birds and humans have humans and, and all these things. They're different fleshes. They don't mix. That's why he uses the word kind right there. Okay, there's one kind of flesh uh, for that. Verse number, um, verse number 39 again. Uh, of men, another flesh of beasts. Men and beasts can't get together and make anything. And another of fish. And another of birds. Now, he's going to change now. He, he had those things on earth. Now he's going to look, get you to look up. There are also celestial bodies. What are celestial bodies? Angels, right? Okay, angels, cherubims, seraphims, the heavenly bodies, those creatures that are in the heavens. That's what he's saying. Okay, he says there is celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. What are terrestrial mean? Earthly. Get your pen out, put next to terrestrial, earthly. So you never lose that again. Earthly bodies. But the glory of the celestial is one, the 
and the, uh, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. They're not the same. The reason why he's saying that is there's going to come some guys years later in the 1900s, and you know what they started saying? They got this book. It was called the Book of Enoch, which is a joke. It's not even real, people. If you read it, you realize, man, this is stupid after a while. Okay? It was made up by some man. And what does it say in that book? Angels were having uh, sex with human beings and making a hybrid. And there's a whole bunch of Bible believers that believe this stuff. He just told you there's one kind of flesh of a celestial body. There's one kind of a, a, a terrestrial body. What's he trying to say? Don't believe that stupidity. People get mad about it. Look, it's nothing. Oh, we've seen UFOs. Like, who cares? You can't do anything about it. All they're doing is diverting you to somewhere else while they steal all our money. Amen. Look, he says there's two types. He says there's a heavenly and then there's an earthly. Verse 41. There is one glory of the sun and another glory of the, of the moon. They don't have the same. They're not the same. Another glory of the stars. Uh, that tells you another thing. The sun is not a star. If it was, God would have told you that. He says, verse 42, So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. If body was put down there, it's raised incorruptible. Whatever comes up of his believers is going to be incorruptible. It is sown in dishonor. All of you, all of us, we've sinned. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. You're put in the ground and it's what you were born with. And it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. Uh, and then he, he likens it to Adam, the next part. Now, the reason why he's saying this, look at verse number uh, 50. Look at verse number 50. Now, this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. What he's trying to tell you, you see that body you got there, that flesh and blood? It's not going there. We need to change it up. It needs to be a different. Why? Remember, he said, "Put on and put off." In Colossians, put on uh, the the, the you know, God's God's uh, armor. He says, "What? Put off the put on the new man. Put off the old man." That's what he's saying. Now he's saying spiritual. There, act like a new man. Act like an old man. But he's, what he's trying to tell you is that old man. That's your flesh. You know, that's what's been sinning this whole time. That's why God leaves it uh, leaves it away. Your soul belongs to Him. You can't sin against your soul. You think you can, you can't. That's why I keep trying to reiterate to you, you can't lose your salvation. God has put it aside. He owns the soul. Okay? You just act like an idiot while you're down here. And sooner or later, guess what? Goodbye. You'll get, you'll, you'll get it. You'll get caught in your own snare. God's looking at it like, hey, look, uh, they, but because uh, I know you get up. A lot of you get uh, a little bit about your kids. Amen? I want to know my kids or ask them. Why don't you just ask them? Stop playing around. I went right to my daughter. I said, well, are you or are not? You don't act like it. Are you or not? Yeah, I am, Dad. Yeah, I am, Dad. What's that mean? She's saved. Stop agitating them. The devil's got them for a couple decades. Don't worry. He'll have them for a hundred decades. He knows what he's doing. How about Lot? He's having... Look what Lot was doing. Drinking with his kids. And then the incest after that. And guess what? He still went up. He still went out of the... He, he still got taken out of that town when then it got judged. That's how God works things. What's that? Get my kids out of there. Look at the boat. Noah, 120 years, banging a boat. Rain comes. Where's all the saved people? They're on the boat. They're up there. Where's all the, where's all the lost people? God took care of his saved people, didn't he? Took care of his kids. Uh, Genesis chapter 19, Lot, he's, his wife and his, his uh, kids, they're all in a town called uh, um, Sodom. They're all in Sodom. All that crazy stuff is happening. And then finally, uh, God says, I'm going to put judgment on it. Isn't the tribulation a judgment? Mm -hmm. And what does God do? Gets down there, takes two angels and go down there and start talking to Lot. What's that? Get out of town. Didn't you notice Lot didn't even want to get out of town? He's sitting there, staying there, him and his wife. What did the angels have to do? grab a hold of him, it says, and took them out of town. They wouldn't even listen. That's what God's going to do. He's going to take you and your kids that want to stay here. Guess what? He's going to take them out of town. 
And then what? Then he rains down all the hail and brimstone. And of course, Lot's wife, uh, she's saved. But guess what? She had to look back. Guess what? You want to you want to stay back in the world? You'll die. You'll die with it. She's still saved. She's still saved. Amen. Remember Lot's wife. Amen. Uh, go back to um, go back to Revelation chapter uh, chapter four. So uh, I've given you these things. What type of body? Uh, next week we're going to go over. We're going to go over a lot more. I'm going to show you the feasts on what day the rapture is by the feast of the Lord. Uh, we're going to see uh, the prime numbers of it. Why? What? What he's actually doing, and uh, and then we're going to see what God did after His resurrection, and then what. I got a theory, and I'm going to give you the theory of what I think uh, is going to happen after after the rapture, right afterwards, immediately. Okay, we're going to go over those things. I'll even give you the what I think is the date. Just to, I'm, I, look. You can't set dates. Oh, yes, you can. Who said you couldn't? Oh, some Baptist preacher. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I've been around Baptist preachers a long time. To tell you the truth, most of them, most hateful people I've ever dealt with. Telling people they can't marry when they're divorced and all these other things. And they, they are expecting friends out of this. Yeah, try and be an 18-year-old kid that made a mistake. They're very harsh people. Amen? God is merciful. He has kindness and long-suffering. He loves his children. He doesn't go around just trying to beat them all the time. Amen? All right, let's, uh, let's uh, pray and go eat some food, and then I throw you out. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord God, for our time here. I thank you, Lord, for being kind to us and, and teaching us these things of the rapture, Lord Father. I thank you, Lord, that you're coming for us, Lord, and we're going to get to see you that way. I thank you for talking to our hearts this morning. And, and also, Lord, thank you for the food. Thank you for the children uh, playing today and, and singing to us, Lord God, in our hearts. Uh, a joyful noise unto thee, Lord Father. Not about talent. It's, it's not about talent. It's about the love of the Lord. We thank you, Lord, and we love you. And let's have a good time in Jesus Christ today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. Amen.